have heard lots of statistics about the rise of dementia in this country, but there are facts and figures that have been forgotten. A new report out today is highlighting the struggle of the people who care for dementia patients. The report from the Canadian Institute for Health Information finds that new Nearly half of all unpaid caregivers in Canada experience distress. That distress can take many forms, from general burnout to financial stress. In 2016, unpaid caregivers devoted an average of 26 hours a week to providing care. They also spent an estimated $1.4 billion in out-of-pocket costs for the estimated 402,000 seniors in Canada with dementia. 61% of those still live in the community rather than in long-term care. I want to bring in Dr. Sharon Cohen now. She's a behavior neurologist and the medical director of the Toronto Memory Program. She joins me in studio. Good morning, Dr. Cohen. Good morning. Good Pleasure to, to be you. here. Thank you. What do you make of the study? Well, the numbers are staggering. It's not new information, but the story needs to be told again and again until our governments take note and implement strategies that are going to make a difference. This problem of dementia is not going away. Not quickly enough, hopefully one day it will, but right now we've got families struggling, you know, vulnerable people in need who are not getting the care they deserve. And, and you know, it's one thing to have a, a cure, an adequate treatment or prevention. It's another thing to look after people so quality of life can go on, and we're just not doing that. So we need a national strategy fast. Yes, and we have a strategy, or we have money dedicated to a 2017 strategy that's been approved with hundred million dollars over the next three years but how is that going to be spent so hopefully this CIHI report will help inform those in the decision-making uh, seats as to how best to spend this money we've had strategies in Canada before we had an Ontario Alzheimer's strategy in the 1990s and you know it didn't really give us what we needed so hopefully with this new study which is far-reaching talks about the impact of dementia in the community, in the hospital setting, in long-term care, uh, impact on physicians. It's a very wide-reaching uh, set of data uh, and we need our governments to take note and use that information as needed. And it seems like the approach has to be multi-pronged. We can't just focus on um, looking after caregivers or we can't just focus on research. There has to be various aspects to this and they all deserve attention that's absolutely right so we need navigators and this was a recommendation back in 2010 uh, when the Alzheimer's Society of Canada um, hired risk analytica to do a similar study to look at the impact of dementia at that time and moving into the future and there were five major recommendations and unfortunately they weren't followed it was a great study many of the findings similar to what we see now with the CIHI um, but yes if we don't have all the pieces in place you can't just as you say fix one part and when we don't have adequate physician resources we don't have enough physicians you know it takes a year to get into a memory clinic typically how are people going to get a diagnosis and then start accessing care when they don't even know what it is that's wrong is it a psychiatric problem is it a you know family dynamic midlife crisis or is this a dementia a neurologic disease so that piece has to be addressed um, you know there's nothing in the current strategy and funding for long-term care when people can't be managed at home and mm -hmm. as you said many are being looked after in the community at the expense of of that person's well-being and the family's well-being and yet there aren't long-term care beds so there are so many pieces it's not impossible to have a strategy that works but we haven't done it yet what do you say to people and you and I both live with this uh, who are feeling who are those caregivers and are feeling distressed burnt out um, kind of at wits end what do you say to them I acknowledge that it's tough. Um, I know this disease inside out on a personal level and uh, every day with my patients whom I love. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're the bigger family for me. Um, dealing with this disease alone, it's not manageable. You know, open up, talk to people, get help, professional help, um, invite friends into your circle, um, do things to look after yourself, not just the one you love and are 
you know, spending all your energy, resources, and efforts to look after. Yes, look after them, but look after yourself. You, you're not going to be good for anybody if you burn out. And burnout is so common. And many caregivers, about half of the caregivers in Canada, are actually between the ages of 45 and 65. They're at their peak um, uh, career and earning time. They're often in the sandwich generation, looking after kids, supporting kids, going off to college and all the worries that come with young adults who often stay at home and then the parent who's come into their home now so this is tough and there are better and worse ways of coping so we can't just wave a magic wand and make the problem go away but we can help people reposition how they're thinking how much they're doing how much support they're willing to take some people just feel it's their god-given duty to look after mom or their spouse and we need to help people realize there's no shame in asking for help, in having some respite, in taking time for yourself. Um, that may be obvious to you and I, but for many people, we get so sucked into this vortex of I have to do this, I have to do that, now it's the medication time, now it's the bath time, who's going to look after mom while I go grocery shopping? And you need to sit back and say, is there a better way to organize my life so we can all survive this? Yeah, build a team. Exactly. You know, it's not just the caregiver that's affected, but that caregiver's ability to interact with friends and with family and do their own child rearing. So it's a very wide reaching problem. And as you say, these numbers are only going to grow. Uh, Dr. Sharon Cohn, always great to have you with us. Dr. Cohn is with the Trump.